Hello knife lovers, welcome to Knife Delights. Well, as you can see from this opening shot, I'm doing an outdoor video here today. I'm at a local county park. It's about 30 degrees out. The sun is shining. The wind is not blowing terribly hard. There's a, a light breeze. It's just been a long, cold, bitter winter. Uh, very windy, uh, windy, cold. And it's just a, gonna be a gorgeous day today. And I just felt like getting out of the house and coming out here. Uh, I hope the wind, uh, the little breeze we do have, doesn't affect the audio too bad. Anyway, the reason we're here today is this is an open tag response to uh, Singing Toads, my five favorite Swiss Army knives. So uh, let me stop here for just a minute and get reset up. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is just gorgeous. Can you hear that crow? I've heard the, heard the uh, Canada geese honking and flying over. Got some pheasant roosters out there uh, sounding off early in the morning, crowing. This is just great. Well, anyway, one of the reasons I, I didn't do an uh, open tag response to this earlier is I had a hard time coming up with five Swiss Army knives. And as you can see laying here, one of these knives um, doesn't look like the rest. So, yeah. If I was to do my five tag or uh, five Swiss Army knife uh, video, I'd have to sneak in this uh, little Chinese made Bass Pro Shop lookalike. But I want you to please hang around. As you can see here, I got four knives left. I have one more knife, it's a mystery knife. And hang around here to the end uh, when I reveal this mystery knife. I think you're going to enjoy the story. So anyway, my five favorite is going to start with this one. This one here, I bought this for my grandson. And he absolutely loves it. He's too young to have an actual knife of his own. But this way, he gets to have a knife like Grandpa. And he's had a lot of uh, hours of fun with this little knife. What a great little toy knife. He just absolutely loves it. Now this is a, a licensed toy. Uh, it's made in China. So how many of you can say that you have a Chinese made Victorinox? But he just absolutely loves this little knife. And it's just a way to, you know, get him interested in knives. Let's see, there's a saw blade in here too somewhere. If I can get to it. He's played with it. They've gotten pushed down in there. Oh. Well, there is a saw blade in here too somewhere. But anyway, so that's for my grandson, just to introduce him to knives. And he likes to have a knife like Grandpa. So the second knife is this little classic SD. I bought this for my granddaughter. And... I keep it uh, in my uh, home office there, and when she comes over to visit, she says, Grandpa, can we look at my knife? Can we use my knife? So it's just a great little knife to, you know, little starter knife for her to teach her how, you know, knife safety, how to open and close the blade safe, safely. So another little favorite there for my granddaughter. Whoops, I keep bumping my tripod here. And this knife here, you've seen this before. Uh, this was in uh, the open tag response to Thrifty Kniffy's uh, Knives of the World. This is an economy recruit. I bought this back in uh, the late 80s in Hong Kong. And until I ran across this knife again, I had forgotten all about it. And all the use... I got out of this. I mean, I carried this in my pocket for about a decade. So there's definitely a lot of neat stories behind this knife. Next in line, number four. You've seen this knife also. I've mentioned it a lot. This has been my daily carry. First uh, knife in the pocket every day. The Victorinox Evo Grip 11. But I'm sorry to say this knife may get replaced 
it may get retired for a while so I did a separate uh, review on this knife if you'd like to look it up on why I liked it as a daily carry knife and now for the big drum roll the mystery knife check this out just check this out and this is the adventurer and this knife was sent to me by Stuart Harvey Stuart thank you so much for this knife I got it last night I can now do my uh, five favorite Swiss Army knives now thanks to you it has a locking blade very nice slide lock here this blade it's a long blade it's got about a I don't know three inch cutting edge to it and I think the overall length of the knife is what did they say here 4.4 inches this I'm gonna start uh, I think this is my new daily carry knife I'm gonna try this out hopefully it's not too big for the pocket but I'm gonna give it a try and it's got the uh, Phillips screwdriver like I liked on the uh, Evo 11 now some people don't like the 90 degree angle to it I kind of like that because again you can get torque with it but and then it's got your other standard uh, features to it got your uh, can opener and the, the small screwdriver up there tip And of course your uh, cap lifter and uh, wire stripper and uh, another screwdriver blade straight blade so yeah this is wonderful I just give a little pause there I don't know if you can hear them geese in the background or not but what a wonderful sound so anyway the story behind this knife Stuart told me that he was going to send me a mystery knife. I got it last night, um, and I was just absolutely flabbergasted. It was so nice of him to send this to me. Uh, he went on and explained that he had carried this knife. This was his personal uh, EDC for several years, and he apologized because it was slightly worn, and I say, you know what, to me, the fact that Stuart used this knife and then gave it to me, that makes it all the more special. What a great knife, what a great gift. And I know that Stuart has uh, a pretty good collection of multi-tools. I'm going to try to put some pictures of those here on the video. Insert some pictures. And now that the knife review is done, I'm going to try to get some more footage here of this uh, county park and a little bit of the history behind this. So, for everyone, thank you so much for watching. This is what makes uh, having a YouTube channel and, and being a part of the knife community is all about. Stuart, you really gave me a very delightful day. Okay, whoop, just heard that pheasant rooster crowing. Anyway, I almost forgot here. Needed to uh, show the box. The Stuart's knife came in. The Tornox since 1884. Adventurer Red. And I failed to mention the handle material here is a little different, I think, than the standard um, molded plastic that they use and it's not smooth it's it's not bumpy but it's uh it's not smooth either so it kind of helps uh, give an extra grip so i'm going to end this uh here as far as the knives i have shot some extra footage and some pictures that i've taken out here 
at the county park. Uh, please, uh, if you'd like to, hang around and watch it and learn a little bit of history here. And I'm going to see how good my editing skills are and see how good my camera work was. So this was sure a lot of fun to be able to be outdoors. Um, I think I've said it before, but Stuart, thank you so much. So here's a view of uh, the park. I'm up in the parking area, what used to be a, a farmstead. Looking off to the south here, you can see the old road. There used to be a gravel road down through there. They've closed it off in the last 15 or 20 years. And I don't know if you can see it off in the distance there, a uh, bridge over the creek. Um, this farm was, is unique. Of course, Iowa was known for uh, corn and soybeans, but this old dry lake bed, um, well, they started growing potatoes here, and it was a potato farm uh, the whole time I was growing up, and they grew some pretty tasty uh, potatoes here. Uh, the farmer and his wife eventually, you know, passed on, and no one in the family wanted to continue it on, so the county uh, was able to obtain this property and restore it back to wetlands. Okay, I walked uh, down the hill, down the old road. I wanted a shot of this old bridge. Of course, it's closed off now. I do remember driving over it, but that's an old bridge. Okay, I'm going to change positions again. Okay, here we are on the bridge, looking off to the west. Boy, can you hear them geese? They sure been noisy out here today. So looking off to the right, up and around, back up to the hill up there, that's where we were standing facing west and that's where the observation deck is. And it's kind of nice here. We see some open water. The ice is coming out. Spring is coming. Hang in there everyone, spring is coming. And here's a view off to the east, off of the old ridge. And here we have a view off to the east. That's where we came from, the old bridge. We're up on the high spot up here where the farmstead was. Now they replanted this with uh, grass that was native to the prairie here. I'll give you a little shot here. You can see this tall grass right here. It's uh, some of it's, uh, you know, five, almost six foot tall. They talk about the pioneers, you know, coming across with their prairie schooners that they'd have to stand up on the on the seat to be, to be able to see to drive because the grass would just, just be so tall. So that's why they called them prairie schooners because it's like they were going through a sea of grass.